Let's take a look at the starting lineups presented by Hilltop Securities, a leading municipal investment bank with over 70 years experience. Learn more at leadtheherd.com. Temple's starting five includes three freshmen you see there, East, Gordine, and Wood with Mayo and Davis rounding out the lineup. And meanwhile, for the SMU Mustangs, they're going to go with all seniors. It is senior day for them. They are honoring eight different players today, including Worth and Wiggins, Smith, White, and Sanderlin. As a former player, I can remember my senior day was against Notre Dame. Had my career high in points, but it's very Drop emotional. about 60. No, I, I wish. I've won that kind of score. But 43 to match your jersey number? I, I, wish, jazz? I wish. No. I do want to clarify, John, when I said if you lose two, you're out. I didn't mean out of the playoffs. I meant, meant out of that top five that gets that bye in the first round for the American Athletic Conference. Oh, absolutely. And that's what this game is going to mean. And you see that Temple is in the black today and SMU is in the white. These two teams are in the four and five spots in the conference right now, both at 500 coming in to this contest with Houston waiting in the wings at number six. The five and six, four and five seeds, I should say, they are the two that are going to face off against one another in the second round of the tournament. We in talking to Coach Wilson. She said that this is almost like a WNBA playoff matchup because they could potentially play Temple in the first round. So it could be a best out of three type of a scenario. So, yeah, these two games are extremely important for both ball clubs. Could be a lot of fun. So Tierra East, Tierra East, I should say, gets things going with a three-pointer for Temple. A rare three. Kayla White has the step but misses. And that's huge for Temple hitting that three-pointer. Temple's a, a team that really struggles to score both from the three-point line and on the interior, except for Mia Davis, who just attempted that last shot. She does not have an issue scoring. A throwaway. Sydney Wiggins comes up with the steal, one of the smoothest players you're ever going to see, the transfer from Rice. And, and, John, that's another issue for the Temple Owls is turnover, something that has bothered them or hampered them all season long. They average 18.4 turnovers per game in conference play. You cannot have that when you're on the road. Nice dump down. Wiggins to Sanderlin, who finishes plus the foul. And I, I love the way these seniors are playing on senior nights. Good job by Sydney Wiggins penetrating the defense, drawing the defense to her, and then diamond it off to Danielle Sanderlin for the bucket through contact. Let's take a look at the keys to the game presented by Sewell, obsessed with service since 1911. For Temple Ball Security, as we just mentioned, they average 18.4 turnovers per game. If they can get closer to 12 in that turnover margin, they'll give themselves a shot at a win. And then defense, Owls have hung their hat on the defensive side all season long. They'll need that against a very good SMU offensive team for SMU rebound. Temple has turned their poor shooting into a strength by dominating on the offensive glass. Everyone has to block out, limit those offensive rebounding opportunities. And lastly, where is Mia? One player cannot defend the preseason player of the year in Mia Davis. It's got to be a collective effort by all five on the court. You have to know at all times, where is Mia Davis? And you have to attempt to make it a difficult shooting night for her. No points yet for Mia Davis, but there she is in the double and Worthen denies her. Yeah, Worthen is a player with her activity and, and athleticism, always gives you a shot at those 50-50 balls as she got that loose ball at half court. So SMU sets up in the half court, averaging 62 points a game. Their offense has been better in conference play than it was during non-con. Kayla White on the curl. And that's one thing that Coach Tanya Cardoza really fretted about for SMU. Multiple players that can offensively do damage and the fact that they are so adept at the mid-range. None better on this court than Kayla White. We'll see Wilkinson in a bit. She's a great mid-range player and a first bucket of the game for Mia Davis, all-time leading scorer in Temple history. And, I, and as I mentioned, she loves that elbow catch. She'll jab, get you off balance, and either attack you at the rim or elevate over the defense. Good scoring start on both sides. Kayla White going to the line for a couple shots here. Good job by Kayla White, again, attacking the rim, initiating contact. Kayla is a body seeker when she gets and elevates and gets towards the rim. A veteran player, she knows how to force the issue and make officials make that call. Good play by the seniors. Kayla White, three points early on. 
She became the 25th Mustang in team history to go over 1,000 points two games ago with her 20-point effort at Tulane. Quite an accomplishment. Congratulations, Kayla White. Nothing like going out on top of the senior and, and gathering that 1,000 points. And you're probably going to see SMU play a good deal of zone today against Temple because of the fact that they struggle so much from the three-point line. And a good denial on the inside as Davis tried to lob it over the top to Alexa Williams. Yeah, when you play against Temple, you really got to just pack it in because you look at them from the three-point line. Their percentage from the three is 23.1%. There's only two teams in the country that shoot a worse percentage than Temple from distance. So you're going to make sure and try to force the issue, force them to shoot it from downtown. Davis gets another shot. And Mia Davis is chasing down second all-time in American Conference history when it comes to scoring as well. She's only now 23 points behind Katie Lou Samuelson of UConn. Well, when you look at Mia Davis in her five seasons, she's averaged double figures in each of those seasons. So she has shown from freshman to here her extra bonus year, I guess, her ability to score. Daniel Sandal and another one of those players that can score, but called for the travel, the transfer from UMass. Bradley, Reagan Bradley, a normal starter who's started every game this season up until today, comes in for White and also Savannah Wilkinson on for the first time. I mean, being nine, nine equal score with your seniors playing against Temple starter, that's a, quite a start for the Mustangs. And I'm sure Coach Toyo Wilson is impressed with their early good start. Williamson, great athlete, the elevation, but not able to hit. One thing Temple needs to do is protect transition defense. SMU very good at transition offense, getting it up and down the court and scoring against mismatch defense. Woo, that's silky smooth for Sydney Wiggins. And that's another one of those three-level score scores that Coach Cardoza are worried about for SMU. Sydney Wiggins can score from all three levels. And again, her mid-range, much like Kayla White, very adept. going to see a lot of sagging and a lot of help on Mia Davis with that Mustangs defense. Gordeen throws it away. Bradley had it, but runs into consternation, and Gordeen able to steal and score. And that's the thing that Gordeen is very good at, the reach around and stealing from behind the back. Averages two steals per game. That's top five in America, so you have to be aware of where she is when you have the ball. How about this? Savannah Wilkinson is called for the offensive foul, trying to back in Davis for some up with the motion during the playing of it. And her teammate says she's like the team mom. She's <laughs> genuine. She's selfless. And Coach Wilson says she's just a team player. This feels so good for her to have that moment. Yeah, special night on senior night. And again, extra special for Paige here in her home national anthem. Uh, Davis gets doubled, tripled, tie ball, possession arrow in favor of SMU. And that's exactly what happens to Mia Davis. Every time she goes out, she gets so much attention. Yeah, you look at Savannah Wilkinson. Immediately she comes down and Daniel Sanderlin, Reagan Bradley, they wall up, put a barrier to the rim, and Mia Davis had three players on her. So good job by the Mustangs, you can see they're trying to make it difficult for her early in this game. Want to force other players for Temple to score. Nice tip by Reagan Bradley. Stepping right down the baseline and one. I love the aggressiveness early by the Mustangs. You see them attacking the rim. Not a lot of rim protection, protection by the Owls. Reagan Bradley puts it on the bounce with her left. Attacks, initiates contact, plays through that contact. And here she has with the N1 scoring opportunity. Jalen Holmes picks up the foul. That is Holmes first, and Bradley makes good on the three-point play. Also in the game, Jaysha Clinton for the first time. She was an All-American freshman team member last year. The three-pointer by Davis over the top. Bradley with a tough rebound. Little frustration there for me, for Mia Davis. She's only made seven threes on the year, so getting her to attempt threes early in the game shows that she is getting frustrated by the relentless active defense of the Mustangs. Temple really bringing it defensively now. Here you see Sydney Wiggins, nice screen by Danielle Sanderlin. And again, she initiates that contact. Officials are not going to allow you to impede motion. And you see the aggressive 
defense of the Owls trying to push the offense of the Mustangs out into the perimeter. Foul on Clinton. They're out of team fouls. Smith stepping back. 17-footer is short. Another tie ball. This one goes to the Owls as Williamson claims the board. Again, love the activity by the Owls. Daniel Sandlin crouching the defensive player after she got the rebound, trying to create second chance scoring opportunities. But again, being active early like the Mustangs have been from the jump ball normally pays dividends for the team. First of two straight here in Dallas. The teams play again on Wednesday night. Same time. Clinton nails a three. With Joshua Clinton, 22% from the three-point line, a capable shooter, hadn't shot a lot on the season, but again, they're going to have those opportunities from the three-point line, so SMU is going to force them to try to make those consistently down the stretch, but again, they have to take those shots when they're open. Smith is the best three-point shooter for SMU as it go in and out, hungry offensive rebounding, but Holmes comes down with the board. Williamson has the position. No, but Davis able to finish. Alexa Williamson had great position down low. She did her work early. But again, you, you can't ever forget about Mia Davis. She's going to find a way to make her imprint on this game with a nice offensive rebound put back for the Owls. Wiggins gets the advantage to pull up just a bit short. Sanderlin has the offensive rebound. Power dribble, no. Grabs a board again and foul by Clinton going up. Danielle Sanderlin from her first time on the court has been aggressive going after loose balls, going after 50-50 balls. Hey, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Didn't make the first bucket. Goes up quickly. First on that second jump to get the offensive rebound and again the Mustangs are forcing the action offensively and here it's paying dividends as they are in the bonus and are putting the Owls in foul trouble. I tell you it feels like over the last three or four weeks that Sanderlin's game has come into greater tune and just she's been a little bit more aggressive. Is that just me or have you seen that as well? I, I, I absolutely have seen that and one of the things that happened is she got opportunity, more opportunity with Savannah Wilkinson going down with her injury, uh, but she rewarded her coach and because of that is able to get more playing time. Jalen Holmes lining up the three. Wilkinson, strong defensive rebound. Smith back to Sanderlin. Sanderlin takes the jumper over the top. Gordine, a great rebounder, and the point guard pushes. Plenty of time for Temple, they'll back it out. Gordine, they go under, so she goes over the top, can't score the three, and a foul on Jalen Holmes. Free throws for Bradley. And John, you're seeing the game plan again of the Mustangs. They're sagging in, they're forcing Temple to take three point shots, and they're gang rebounding. You saw three white jerseys inside the lane doing a good job gathering that rebound of Reagan Bradley, and the foul by Jalen Holmes off of that defensive rebound. But again, they're going to force you to take those shots, and they're going to force you to take and make them consistently. Good game plan early on by Coach Toyo Wilson of the Mustangs. Mentioned the rebounding up nine to seven in that count. Bradley ties the score up with the free throw. And one of the dangerous things when you do play in zone against a team like Temple is the fact that it leaves you open for offensive rebounds. And Temple averages 13.3 offensive rebounds per game, top 65 in the country. So they are adept at crashing the offensive glass. For SMU's credit, they are one of the better defensive rebounding teams in the league, though, percentage wise and overall. Game. Yeah, the defense is really the one thing that's held them into games, and despite the fact of their shooting woes, they've been defensively and offensively rebounding all season long. How about the freshman, Tiara East? She came to score today, already eight points, two threes. Well, hey, when you're given those opportunities, you're either going to make them or miss them, but you can't make anything if you don't take them, giving, giving East a lot of credit for taking those open three-point shots. Bradley, strong, Williamson with the board. 
And as any coach would tell you, at some point, the well is going to break and the shooting woes are going to end. And if you're the opposition, you just hope that it's not on your watch. They only average three and a half threes a game. They already have three in the first quarter. Gordine with seven to shoot. Out to Perea, who's in for the first time. Make it three to shoot. East forced to hoist. And Rufus has the rebound with literally .1 on the shot clock. There is no time for Temple to do anything here. Yeah, fortunate play. Oh. I didn't for see the her Mustangs. Get, yeah, I didn't see Rufus her get knocked down like that. And then she touches the out of bounds. So now it goes back to Temple. And in that situation, it would have been better just to let it go out of bounds. But hey. Yeah, no time to do anything. No time to do anything. Shot clock. A little under nine to play in the quarter. And a chance for a Mustangs final shot. Plenty of time to set up your offense. Look for... Jasmine Smith probably to do a pick and roll type scenario with Savannah Wilkinson and read and react. Paige Bayless coming in as well. She's got a nice cheering section here for senior day. Paige Bayless fan club is strong. You know it. Smith picks it up near midcourt. Nice screen by Paige Bayless. And Smith gets foul shots. Another foul coming on Temple. This one on Alexa Williamson. Paige Bayless should get a half of an assist for the nice screen that she had on Jasmine Smith. Freeing her up just a little bit to allow Smith to turn the corner and attack the rim. And then once Smith got in the lane, she did the rest, initiating that contact while attacking the rim. Jasmine Smith's season has gotten better and better as it's gone. In conference play, I mean, she's been second best in the league in assists. And <laughs> gets a kind little bounce here. Almost four and a half assists per game this year. Three seconds. And no time to do anything. Smith comes up with a steal. So a very competitive ball game. Temple comes out shooting very well. So does SMU. We've got a two. Turn the ball over, but that's something that you have to shore up for a team to average a little under 19 turnovers per game. Those are what I call those self-inflicted wounds, and, and you're not giving yourself an opportunity to win, particularly when a lot of those times you're not even getting a shot at the rim. So that's something that Coach Cardoza was aware of and something that you know she preaches and constantly harps on. Wilkinson, she almost turns it over, has it back, only eight to shoot. Smith stepping back for three. Oh, buries it. As a, as a former player, John, sometimes those shots that with the clock going down and you have to take it, those can be some of the easier shots to make because there's no pressure on it. And as you saw, the second miss three by Mia Davis. They're going to force her. They're going to sag off her in the lane and force her to take some distant shots. Owls have made three triples so far. Williamson gets open inside, tries to go reverse. And here comes Bradley. Love the recognition by Temple, seeing the wide open player just not able to make the easy bucket down low. Well, Dean has her second steal. Gordine, one of five players in the nation with more than one triple-double this year. And another strip away. Williamson takes it away from Davis. And what was interesting to me is she was two rebounds away from her third triple-double. Just to have one triple-double is amazing. But to have two and to almost have three, it shows as a freshman that Temple has a great one on their side. A little bit short. And remember, these are 40-minute games. While triple-doubles in the NBA may seem like uh, people do it all the time, that's a 48-minute game. We're talking about 40-minute games. It is tough to do. I don't know anyone that says uh, no big deal for a triple-double. I mean, that's a big deal unless, you know, your triple-doubles with the turnovers, you know, because there's a lot of triple singles, as Barkley would say, out there. You bet. I, I just think it's become a little bit more common with a Russell Westbrook or a Luka Doncic, and people are, you know, they don't think about it being as hard as it is. Right. I, res I respect the triple-double. Don't get me wrong. Kayla White off the bounce. Rufus, big rebound for the freshman, and she gets fouled to the floor and kind of goes down awkwardly, too. Well, when it comes to 
offensive rebounds in this game. The Mustangs with four, and they are just attacking all of those 50-50 balls. As you see Zaria Rufus go up and over Gordeen for that rebound. And at a certain point, John, it's just who wants it more. And more times than not in this game, you've seen the Mustangs player have wanted those 50-50 balls more. Wilkinson. It's been her spot all season, but it carries on. Temple trying to regain the lead. They led by as many as three, but it's been a great seesaw affair so far. Monty Mayo, the fifth year senior. Davis, the fellow fifth year, poked away again. As you see, you have total court awareness by the Mustangs of where Mia Davis is at all times throughout the court and they are making everything difficult with for her as you see Kayla White knock down the three-pointer and another turnover leads to a bucket yeah those points off turnovers where you don't even get a shot at the rim can be deflating when you are on the road so White knocks down a three and then a stop it so the officials didn't make any changes when it came to the clock or anything like that so, and they did not come over to tell us what it was about. So, right back to play with 15 to shoot it for Temple. The Owls now down by four. Williamson steps out to the corner. Nearly another giveaway. Only four to shoot. Three-pointer way short, and Davis can't put it up in time. Swarming defense by the Mustangs in these first two quarters. And you're seeing countless offensive possessions for Temple where they are in the waning seconds of the shot clock. Not a situation that you want to consistently be. So the Mustangs are contesting shots and they're forcing the Temple Owls into the waning seconds of the shot clock. Good defense in these first two quarters by the Mustangs. Look at Jasmine Smith. What a first step. Because the Mustangs have been the aggressive early, you're seeing Temple Owls playing on their heels, and Jasmine Smith, with her ability to, with a nice steal there, attack the rim has really got Temple on their heels. Smith's not able to hit it. Still, it's been an 8-0 run for SMU to start the second quarter, and Temple head coach Tony Cardoza has seen enough. She calls time. Well, you got plus 10 points. She's in the positive area, aggressive, confident, and playing her game huge for SMU. Two assists, zero turnovers right now, plus three steals as well. She's taking it away. And as you know, the point guard is the first line of a first line of defense, and the fact that she's aggressive really sets the tone for the rest of the Mustangs. Mia Davis finally gets Temple on the board in the second quarter. That is their first bucket to make it a four-point game, and Davis has eight. Well, John, when you have a player like Mia Davis, you're not going to stop her. What you want to make her into is a volume shooter. Now she's four for eight. She's still shooting a great percentage, but you just want to make all of her attempts contested and frustrate her throughout the game. Kayla White has five to shoot here. White, deep two. Talking to Coach Cardoza, of Temple and she said one thing the Mustangs do well is they make contested mid-range jumpers And you just saw Kayla White make a contested mid-range jumper jump shot She wanted to try to run the Mustangs off the line make those shots difficult But again Mustang shooting very well early in this first half Again on the three to shoot and it gets thrown away. Wiggins has the steal. SMU really taking control now. John, they talk about having high hands and Sydney Wiggins on that possession had high hands, jumps for the basketball, able to intercept the pass. And I don't recall too many games where you have this many steals and deflections early on on the front line. You see Jasmine Smith attacking the interior. I don't know what they call it on that. Travel. Oh. Okay. But it is eight steals so far for SMU. That's a lot early on. It is a lot, and, and at least three of them have been just straight takeaways by the Mustang defensive players. Jasia Clinton, a good idea, but it didn't appear as if the freshman Kyra Wood was looking for the basketball here. 11 turnovers. Mm. 
by Temple in the first half, and you're well on your way to a 25-28 turnover game if this continues for the Owls. Well, right now, the conference standings have UCF up top at 13 and 1, followed by South Florida 11 and 3, and Tulane at 11 and 4. Those teams are uncatchable. But SMU and Temple, both at 500 coming in, are at 4 and 5. And again, the top five get the first round by in Fort Worth. And while where these games are important for SMU is both of these, they're already down one win to Temple. And if they were to lose two and Houston win against UCF, Houston could potentially get into that top five and knock SMU out. White could not hit the three, but look at Mathis coming in, sneaking down, getting big, picking up the offensive rebound and going to the line. John, sometimes it's about relentless pursuit of winning plays, and this is a winning play. Desiree Mathis wanted the ball more. I, I, I've talked about it ad nauseum throughout this game. The players that want it more go out and get it, and they make things happen. Desiree Mathis, surrounded by three other Temple players, went up and got the basketball. Sometimes you just got to make it happen. Mathis, the junior out of Waco University High School. This is on the first. Hasn't been at the line a lot this season, but has earned some more playing time as the season's gone on, especially as a kind of a defensive specialist for Toyo Wilson. I'm a little confused by that name, <laughs> University High School. Yeah, Waco University High. I don't. Maybe it's near Baylor. That's what I've always thought. I need to check on that. That's a theory that I'm going with. Yeah, I'll work with that theory. Mustangs back in their zone. And again, Temple have not consistently been able to knock down perimeter shots to make them get out of it. Good offensive rebound, and the ball did hit the rim. Gordine goes inside. Davis is triple teamed, and she earns foul shots. Davis has lived at the line in her career. Nobody has shot or made more free throws in the history of American Athletic Conference women's basketball. Watch Mia Davis get it before the bounce comes. Reagan Bradley comes baseline side to harass Mia Davis. And as you mentioned, John, one of the best in the American at free throw attempts, top 40 in the country, free throw makes top 37 in the country. So look, she knows where her bread and butter is and she plays a physical brand of basketball and she is very adept at scoring at the most efficient place to score and that's free throw line. And that's why she helps Temple to 21% of their points coming from the free throw line. That's top 35 in the nation. Nine already for Mia Davis. Helping Temple hang around against SMU. Kayla White. Give it to her. She has 11. Kayla White so good at catching the basketball. Quick turn. Elevate over the defense to knock down shots. And you saw a plethora of screens that they're running the Temple defenders through. Making it very difficult to keep track of Kayla White. Good job to come in and tie it up by Mathis. It's going to stay right here as Shante Taylor missed inside. And so what the Mustangs are showing you in this first half is that even if they don't get the defensive rebound, even if they don't get the offensive rebound, they're going to get a hand on it, and they're going to harass you throughout. This time it's Davis, and she matches the start by Kayla White. She has 11. You saw what Davis did. She got the ball quick, one bounce up quickly before the double team can come. That's a player who understands positioning and double team and trying to get her shot off quickly. Kayla White, they're looking for her. She's been efficient early, just off the mark here. Anaya Gordine, one of the best freshmen in the league. Giving a little jab step to Mathis. And here's Davis, split by Bradley. Mathis up to White. The little Euro, and she's blocked at the bucket by Perea. Mia Davis, awareness, as you see. Reagan Bradley got in there to get the swipe and get the transition going, and then you give it to Kayla White, who did the rest. Nice Euro step to avoid the defender in the lane. Temple recovered to get that last swipe to prevent her from getting the transition bucket. Oh, Kayla White <laughs> should have gone down. Temple's 
definitely in this thing. Only down by five. It feels like it could be bigger. Yeah, despite the fact that Temple has 12 turnovers and SMU has scored 12 points off those turnovers, Temple in this game, and you got to credit their defense and Mia Davis, preseason player of the year candidate, keeping them in this game. A lot of contact, but instead a traveling call on Shantae Taylor. Regardless of who gets the basketball for Temple, the Mustangs are doing a great job of walling up towards the ball and loading towards the ball, and you're seeing two to three defenders encircling anyone that gets within range of the of the rim. 90 seconds till halftime. First matchup of two this week between SMU and Temple, and there is a better than not possibility of them meeting again at the conference tournament, too. Wide off the curl. No, Sanderlin the offensive rebound. Good job by Sanderlin pulling the basketball out. Did not have a shot, did not try to force it. You got plenty of time on the shot clock. Pull it out, try to get a better shot. Four seconds on the clock. Wiggins stepping back, and it doesn't go, and there's a foul on the floor. And I think this is going on Temple. Yeah, it goes on Mia Davis. Well, you're seeing two player of the year candidates in Mia Davis and Savannah Wilkinson going at it down on the block. Savannah Wilkinson, number two in the conference in rebounding. Mia Davis, number 10. You get entangled. Savannah Wilkinson is a veteran. She did a little bit of acting for the officials, and it paid off. Wilkinson can't make the shot. Jordine rebounds her position as well as anybody in the league. Jordine, who leads the team in assists and steals, stepping through yet another travel. This game's being called tight. Yeah, it, and it's a conference game down the stretch, and I think the officials know the magnitude and the weight that this game carries, and... The good thing about it is they are calling it consistent on both sides of the court. And as a player, you have to recognize how they're calling it and adjust your game because they're not going to change it. Yeah, you're not getting that baby step today. Temple's turned it over 14 times now. In clock to shot clock difference here is 13. Jasmine Smith gets it. Back to Wilkinson, 17-footer. Vanna Wilkinson might not have the lift yet on that injured knee. When you see a shot consistently being short, a lot of times that's not, you're not getting the lift that you need to get. Williamson gets a good look inside, fouled with three and a half seconds left in the half. Savannah Wilkinson with her potential second foul. You see her go help down low and gets that left arm on the arm of Alexa Williamson. You don't want to have that for their MIP most important player. Yeah, Wilkinson picks up number two and does sit down. No points and two rebounds. SMU has Keanu Worthen coming back in. So Alexa Williamson, fourth year at Temple, 66% at the line, but hard off the heel on the first. Good defensive player. One and a half blocks a game. So three and a half seconds to do something with it. To Bradley. Bradley from 30. Just off. And at the half, SMU takes a four-point lead and a back and forth first 20 minutes. If I'm at one of the best pure jump shooters, John, in the country. No doubt about it, and White has really starred over the second half of the season and into conference play, averaging 14 points a game in conference. There are 11 points in the first half. She moved into 24th all-time in team history in scoring. Savannah Wilkinson finally on the board for SMU. Yeah, as you mentioned, she took three of those same type of shots in the first half, not able to knock them down. Coach Toyo Wilson wanting to get Savannah Wilkinson going early. The nice design play to set her up on the baseline, and she knocks down. She missed three games with injury, came back last time out against Houston in a big loss. 8.6 rebounds. Mia Davis, just a bona fide score. 13 now.
Ia Davis trying to chase down Katie Lou Samuelson for second all-time in American Conference history. And a, that throw by Wilkinson, Wilkinson there. And some U-turns it over. Little miscommunication between Wilkinson and Sidney Wiggins. Wilkinson thought she was going to go up and Wiggins with the fake on the defensive overpressure. Four-point game where we were at the break. Ball knocked away by Kayla White, but Gordine goes back to recover it. Turns into an open triple in and out for Mayo. White with the speed and the moves in the open floor. Make or miss. Mustangs want to put push it and put pressure on Temple's defensive transition. Wiggins comes up short. And it is partially blocked. It's out off of Temple. As we notice in the first half, the Mustangs are getting the shots that they want, just not knocking them down. But again, you love the aggressiveness they have offensively. They push it in transition, try to get the shot they want, and then attack the glass. Wow. Excellent open look by Wiggins on the assist with Smith. Wiggins and Smith combining again after doing it for so many years. Three of them, their last stop at Rice. Sanderlin denies Davis and steals it. Just careless passes by Temple and aggressive defense with active hands by the Mustangs. And it's good to see that they are continuing that same activity they had in the first half. Wilkinson, nice. great position inside. Her fade doesn't go. Nice seal. Wilkinson did her work early, got down low, just not able to elevate over the defense. Gordine into Smith, leaves it short, grabs her own miss, and is fouled. If it's on Wilkinson, that's number three, and yes, it is. Daniel Sanderlin Sander coming out. Yeah, Daniel Sanderlin looked like he got hit up on a play, and Gardeen getting that second chance scoring opportunity. It looked like the foul was on Jasmine Smith. They called that on Wilkinson. That's, that would be unfortunate if that were to stay on Wilkinson. Now it looks like that's what they're going to go with is the Wilkinson foul. For Gordine, she leads all rebounders in this one with seven from her point guard spot. Gordine is one of those stat stuffers where, whether it be rebounds, assists, points, steals, she's going to make her presence felt, and she's done that throughout the season. See what happened to Sanderlin here. Oh, stepped on Gordine's foot. Yeah. Little twist of the ankle. Hopefully she'll be okay. Aria Rufus is in to play for Sanderlin here. Smith curling in. Nice change of direction and change of speed by Jasmine Smith. Paige Bayless is also in for Wilkinson. Good take by Wiggins, blocked from behind. And Bayless had it for a moment. Here comes Mayo. Three-pointer, Gordine, short. Again, the Mustangs have shown that they're going to allow Temple to have that three-point shot with a contest. And Temple made three of them in the first half, which is above their average. But they're going to have to consistently make those against the defense that Mustangs have employed in this game. Rufus fouled on the drive. Good take by Rufus, attacking on the bounce. And really the smart part about that is attacking Mia Davis, trying to get her into foul trouble. It'd certainly be helpful. It's two fouls on Davis. Meanwhile, White's over the top. Davis with a third rebound in this game. Davis has the ability to bring the ball up as she met and shown on that last, last possession. And Coach Cardoza is very creative in ways that she gets Davis involved offensively. In and out on this one. Davis had the rebound for a moment flicked out of her hands by Wiggins, who was standing out of bounds. Tierra East takes it baseline. Davis able to get the second chance, score an opportunity with the rebound, and quick hands by Sidney Wiggins and knock it out of bounds. Wiggins was never out of bounds there. That's an early whistle by the official. It happens. Davis down the baseline. 
Comes up short. Offensive rebound by Wood. Blocked easily by Bayless. Stays with it to flick it away. And Rufus has it poked out. Gordine with the steal. Offensive foul. So much to talk about on that last <laughs> possession, John. First, the reach around steal by Anaya Gordine, which he's very adept at. But watch the SMU players just wall around the awesome offensive players. And watch Gordine. Nice reach around. One of the best in the American Conference at getting those type of steals. And then Jasmine Smith, which you've seen of her throughout this season, getting herself in legal guarding position in front of the restricted area to take the charge. Smith doubled. Rufus on the drive, fouled again by Davis. That's three. Yeah, that's that's big for Temple because Mia Davis has three fouls. She's not able to play aggressively, which she is a very aggressive attacking type offensive player. And what that does as a player is it makes you play on your heels a little bit and you're cognizant of not wanting to get that fourth foul. Yeah, she lets Rufus go right past her. Offensive rebound, Bradley over the top. Rufus keeps it alive. Here's Bayless. Fouled. And, John, you could sense for the Mustang players that they, one, they were aware that Mia Davis had three, but two, that they had the advantage with their aggressiveness. Zaria Rufus starts that going on, getting her hands on it, and Paige Bayless follows it up. And just like Carolis play, John, is infectious, active, aggressive, and dominating play is infectious as well as you see Mustangs able to carry that over from the first half. Paige Bayless, if you missed it, before the game, uh, they played the Australian National Anthem for the Queensland native, went to Brisbane State for her high school days, Over two on this trip. And I think one thing that you worry about as a coach for senior days, because of the emotions involved, that your players are going to be too emotion, emotional and maybe the game will get away from them, but very good job by the veterans of this ball club because, yeah, they got emotional, but once it was time to tip it up, they're ready to play. The freshman Rufus did not like the call as Davis was going up. Let's see. Well, Mia Davis, again, she's going to attack the defense. She's going to attack the baseline more times than not, knowing there's no defensive help. And again, when you're a preseason potential uh, player of the year, you're going to get those calls, John. Oh, Mayo! Imani Mayo, her head coach, Tanya Cardoza, said we need some big shots from her today, and there's a big one for the fifth-year guard. Savannah Wilkinson with, with her three fouls. you got to wonder how long Coach Toyo Wilson is going to let her sit on the bench as you see the offense floundering a little bit on these last couple possessions. Well, no Wilkinson here, but two players coming in as Wilson's going to go come back with White for Rufus and Wortham coming in for Bradley. Well, Kayla White is one of those players where it's like break in case of offensive emergency. <laughs> you need points, break glass, insert Kayla White. You need aggressive offense, break glass, insert Kayla White. And so when you see them floundering offensively, break glass, bring in Kayla White. Seems like SMU's been teetering on breaking the game open, but here's Temple only down by two. They could take a lead on this shot by Perea. Over the top, Davis tracks down the rebound. No good, and she wanted a foul too. Look at the bench for Temple. They're in sense. Well, Temple got the shot that they wanted to from Karanda Perea. Really the only three-point shooter for the Owls that shoots above 22% consistently. Worth a no, White had the rebound knocked out of her hands by Gordine, and that sends us to a timeout. It's two teams meeting twice. They would stay and could possibly move to that fifth position, but Houston could definitely put a kink in the plans with a good showing at South Florida. Good entry pass to Kayla White there. Couldn't get the bounce off the glass, but goes to the line. Execution on out of bounds plays often can be the deciding factor in closed basketball games and nicely executed play by the Mustangs. And speaking of execution, that's one thing that Coach Toyo Wilson talked to me about last night about this team is look, they executed against Houston, uh, but they just 
missed shots. They were one in ten on layups and <laughs> against Houston. And so she said, look, not only do we have to execute, but you gotta make those layups, you gotta make those shots. And Kayla White is another player, one for seven versus Houston. And so she's definitely had a better game tonight than she did against Houston. Davis, great position, gets the roll and the foul and has a chance at the three-point play. John, this is what you call strength. Mm. Mia Davis gets the shot blocked and able to have enough strength to push the ball through on her way down. That's just an experienced player. Third best scorer all time in American Athletic Conference history. She has 16. She ties it up four minutes to go in the third. Kayla White slips it to Sanderlin. It's worth it. Out to Wiggins. Open three. Bang it down. Sydney Wiggins just waited on the baseline. Nice kick out by Worthen, hitting the open player. Big shot for the Mustang. Wiggins was only one of her last ten from three before that make. Davis has position again. She does it again. Another and one. Again on Sanderlin. Mia Davis is just doing her work early. Look at her down low. She had the position. Daniel Sanderlin cannot allow Mia Davis to be that low and to have those sort of angles that you see Coach Toyo Wilson bring in Savannah Wilkinson. If you allow Davis to get position anywhere near that, it's going to be a bucket and a foul. Credit to Mia Davis to, for creating that space and doing her work early to get that position. She's got more than half the points for Temple, 19 of the 37. As the only player that scores in double figures, they're used to that scenario, but the Mustangs have to do a better job defending Mia Davis and keeping her out of the lane. Kayla White brings it in as we go back and forth in Big D. Timeout, Toyo Wilson. Hitting the open shooters lead young women and she's done a tremendous job as the head coach of the Temple Owls. No doubt about it. Two-time conference coach of the year. She's been big five coach of the year in Philly four times. Temple trying to get back in this thing. Perea, the pull up, comes up just short. And Worthen gets fouled 90 feet away from the basket. We're going the other way to shoot some free throws here. Smart job. Coach Toyo Wilson called timeout. She wanted to institute her full court diamond press. And with that you're just trying to disrupt the offense and force players to take shots that they're not accustomed to. As you see, Karanda Perea take a nice little mid-range quick shot, quicker than they're accustomed to. SMU got the rebound, and you know, you're not always trying to get a steal with the full court press. More importantly, you're trying to disrupt the opposition's offense, and SMU did a good job in that. Worthen couldn't get him to go. In and out on the second. Empty possession for the Mustang. Yeah, for sure. Still a two-point game. Temple's been hanging around, and Mia Davis has been willing the team to stay in it. Here she is with 19 points. Davis caroms off. Long two for Mia Davis. You see how the Mustangs are forcing her out offensively to take some long shots in order to get her offense. Smith grabs her own miss, and another foul on Temple after the hustle play by Smith to chase down her own miss. But John, this is something that you just can't have. Just watch all these players for Temple. Just watch as Jasmine Smith goes after the basketball. Three Temple Owls had the opportunity to get that basketball, and Jasmine Smith went up there and got it. That is the third on Jasha Clinton. And Jasmine Smith to the line for two. And SMU today is just having a rough time at the line. They are only 8 of 19 as a team. As my high school coach always told me, free throws win and lose close basketball games. And second chance scoring opportunities will help you out when you miss those free throws. Absolutely. Wilkinson trying to make sure it's not an empty possession. White has another offensive rebound. Two consecutive offensive rebounds for Kayla White just wanting the basketball more. Yeah. 
Sydney Wiggins with a highlight reel take, and SMU third time's a charm. Give that assist to Kayla White with her two offensive rebounds. Mustangs back in there. 1 2 2 press. Perea from the corner keeps her team in it, dropping it in. And that was a defensive lapse by the Mustangs because that's the one player that you do not want to let leave open from the three point line, and that's Karanda Perea. 33% three point shooter for the Temple Owls. Coach Cardoza says you can really shoot it. White can too, but comes up short here. The rebound by Mia Davis, by the way, has vaulted her into second all time in rebounding in American Athletic Conference history. Davis backing in, scoring it. Two let or <laughs> two Temple, I should say. The other two take the lead. The other and TU. Again, John, when you allow a player with the offensive capabilities of Mia Davis to get the basketball that low, she's going to be able to score. Here comes Wilkinson the other way. Similar type scenario. Savannah Wilkinson bully balling herself, getting close to the rim and forcing the issue offensively. You're seeing two veteran basketball players putting their teams on their shoulders down the stretch. To Temple sling back in front. Gordine nearly throws it away. Yeah, now it is a steal, this time by Wilkinson. Careless passes. Temple with 16 turnovers in the game, and SMU deal with that plus 10 points off turnover. Smith, challenged to shoot the three, comes up short. And a buzzing Moody Coliseum is hushed. Ten seconds left in the quarter. Got to make sure you don't allow Miranda another open three. Clinton can't hit it, but she goes to the line for two. Wiggins called for the foul. Temple can take the lead. Fortunate that wasn't on Savannah Wilkinson. But credit Temple on that possession. Patient, did not try to rush their offense, move the basketball around, attack the gaps in the press defense. Able to get a good look at the basket and initiate contact for the foul. Game that means so much. The first of two this week here in Dallas. Maybe the first of three straight between these two teams if things play out like they could. And proving that these teams are very evenly matched at this point. Yeah, evenly matched. They play a, a, a similar type of style as far as they get a lot of their offense from their defense. The only difference with the Mustangs is they have a lot more balance with three players scoring in double figures and Temple just with Mia Davis scoring in double figures. Key distinction, one of two trip. Wilkinson brings away the rebound. Smith checks the clock, fires beyond midcourt, and that's the end of three with Temple and SMU. No separation in this battle of two. What impresses me the most about the way that she's done it offensively, this season she's leading the American in field goal percentage of 48.9. When you're a volume scorer that has to score for your team and you are the focal point of the defense and you're able to do it in an efficient manner, much like she's done tonight, going nine for 16 from the field, that speaks volumes for your skill set as an offensive player. And it's going right after Sanderlin. Sanderlin blocks her shot and gets it to go off of Mia Davis on the play. Daniel Sanderlin, nice defense, always walling up, trying to prevent Mia Davis from getting a good look at the basket gets a hand on the basketball good job of frustrating the potential play of the year candidate Mia Davis for Temple and how about this for SMU as tough as it's been offensively for them they've got 11 steals and six blocks defensively yeah but I think the biggest thing that's been hurting them is they've been shooting like stormtroopers from the free throw line going eight for 20 from the free throw line and that's something that for a good basketball team, going 8 for 20 from the free throw line is, is unheard of. 40% from the free throw line. Not fun at all. Uh, and it shows how SMU could have an 8, 10 point lead in this game if they were shooting like they should. But it's left the door cracked for the Temple Owls. Can they step through it? And both of these teams, both of these 
teams coming into this game had lost four out of five, so they didn't have a lot of positive momentum, and, but this is a good opportunity for either team to make inroads and, and have a huge impact on their season. Gordine, a player is answered for Anaya Gordine. A nice little heave by Anaya Gordine to put them up by three. Again, though, that's a shot that the Mustangs coming into this game were going to allow Temple to take because of the fact that they have those struggles from the three-point line. Wilkinson. It goes out to Smith with only five to shoot. The runner, the roll goes. John, you attack the poor closeout. Jasmine Smith saw the poor closeout by Jaysha Clinton and attacked it, got to the rim, and got a much-needed huge hoop for the Mustang. One-point game. Only 10 to shoot it here for the Owls. Clinton attacking. Perea with only two to shoot off to Clinton against the shot clock way off. Good defensive stand by the Mustangs. Looked like Temple struggled to find some good offensive continuity on that possession. Were you surprised they didn't get Davis involved at all on that possession? Well, I saw Davis wave them to the other side, so I don't know if they had a different set call or she wanted a little bit of a rest on that offensive possession. But again, it certainly credit, deserves one. Great, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> credit, credit SMU though for putting Temple in a difficult offensive situation on that possession. SMU trying to take the lead back. They've had it most of the night. Smith, the edge. The score to go ahead. John, you can't allow Jasmine Smith to turn the corner and attack the rim without the help side defense. Poor weak side defensive recognition by Temple not bringing the help and allowing Jasmine Smith to go unmolested to the rim. No Davis touch yet here. Now they get her one. Can't score. Great pass by Temple over the top. Got the basketball to the player they wanted to, and Mia Davis had the shot that she wanted, just came up a little bit short. Seven-minute mark. It's a rock fight. Going back to Smith. Just off the hand of Wilkinson. Great idea. Yeah, smart play. Jasmine Smith saw the defense converge. Wanted to hit it to Savannah Wilkinson just a little bit too hard. As you see, defense on the last possession had two defensive players. But again, when Jasmine Smith is able to turn the corner, get a little sliver of light so quick with their ability to change speeds and attack the rim. And without that weak side defensive help from Temple, able to get a much-needed bucket. Davis earning foul shots. Sanderlin goes tumbling. Davis goes back to the line to try to give Temple the lead. One thing about Mia Davis is you know she's going to continue to attack the rim, puts the ball on the bounce, attacks it with her left, initiates that contact, as you know she is so adept at doing. And with the game on the line, you're going to see the basketball in the hands of Mia Davis down the stretch. 702 attempts in her career, Mia Davis. Nobody in the American, none of those UConn players over the years. Nobody's had more. Davis goes two for two, and Temple leads again. Temple's eight of 12 at the line, SMU eight of 20. Out to the corner to Sandalin. Wilkinson, the advantage against Davis. Quick hook shot, no. Offensively, they're sagging off Danielle Sanderlin putting two players on Savannah Wilkinson. She's going to need to cut to the rim or go to the opposite end, making it very difficult for Savannah Wilkinson to get any space offensively to get her shot off. Three-game losing streak for Temple, trying to snap it. Gordine again, brings oh. it home. Anaya Gordine. 
Anaya Gordine with only 16 three-point makes previously to tonight here on the Hilltop. Huge time for it. Four-point lead for Temple. Here goes Kayla White. Mean crossover. Couldn't hit it. Grabs her own miss and is fouled. Kayla White, nice quick first step to the rim. Ball bounces around as you've seen so much throughout this game. SMU able to get to those 50-50 balls. Kayla White gets it, quick ups it, not able to knock it down. But again, getting those opportunities and hopefully she can stop the Stormtrooper shooting from the free throw line, but she is not. Stormtroopers prevail. In the second half, SMU is one of nine from the free throw line. Two of ten. Kayla White cuts it down to a three-point game. A lot of time to go, but the Owls in a great spot on the road to take a one-game lead for fourth place. Jordine, she's hit two big threes this quarter. Off to Davis. Davis couldn't hit it. There's a player trapped. Kayla White has the speed. Oh, couldn't hit it. But goes to the line again. And she came in, and they have the opportunity to go into the tournament with two wins as the four-seeded team in the American Athletic Conference in a first-round bye. So, I mean, you talk about a microwave coaching <laughs> start by Coach Toyo Wilson. Tremendous job. One of two cash in at the line for Kayla White to make it a two-point game. Temple up by two. They've hit seven threes, Stephen. That is one off their season high of eight versus Georgetown back in November. Yeah, you're looking in conference play. They make about 2.7 threes per game, so they have more than doubled their production. Perea way off on this one, and here comes White. SMU can tie or take the lead. White all about the top. John, long shots lead to long rebounds that can turn into runouts, which Kayla White utilized on that offensive transition possession to start out the transition for the Mustangs and get a one man fast break. Clinton through the lane, only nine to shoot. Back to Clinton. Bumped. Travel. Turnover on Temple. I got a question for you, Stephen. How is Kayla White faster dribbling than everybody else is not dribbling? Sometimes that just happens when you get the basketball in your hands. You, you might be injured. You're not injured anymore when you got the basketball. But <laughs> Kayla White, so quick with the basketball, with the ability to speed up and just sense where the rim is. And nobody better than getting to the rim than Kayla White. 4-0 run for SMU, looking for the lead here. Kayla White turns the corner, has the advantage, and a 6-0 run all on the back of number 32. John, like I mentioned, her ability to turn the corner between Kayla White and Jasmine Smith, they've utilized their change of speed once they turn the corner in pick and roll situations are pinned down screens and Kayla White definitely feeling it in this fourth quarter. Nine to shoot it. Here's Gordine. She's hit some cold-blooded shots in the fourth looking for another. No, but an offensive rebound and stick back to quell the run. Kyra Wood with her first. Ira Wood using all of her 6-3 frame to get that second chance scoring opportunity and make a big bucket for the Owls. Davis with the steal and Temple can take the lead back with three minutes left. It has been a great one. He's thought about it. Trying to break down Wiggins. Wiggins packs it, ties it up. And it's SMU ball. How about that steal? Sydney Wiggins got a sup. Tierra East with the basketball to create the change of possession for the Mustangs. Good, heady, physical play by Sydney Wiggins. 13th steal of the night. SMU looking for the lead back. 
Kayla White against the freshman East. White out of control, loses it out, and they're going to call an offensive foul. Yeah, Kayla White knew the second she got contact that it was an offensive foul and she had over-penetrated. That's one of the things that at times can derail Kayla White is a little bit of an over-aggression. Can't over-penetrate. That's a situation you want to pull it out or take the short pull-up mid-range jump shot, which she is adept at doing. Temple looking for the lead back. Wilkinson playing with Davis, knocking it away. Ten to shoot it. They give it to Gordine, the freshman point guard. Gordine has been hot from distance. Gordine, beautiful move past Sanderlin, but leaves it short. Long rebound. Wiggins had it. It's on the ground. And a shot clock violation. Fortunate, fortunate for the Mustangs. Gordine had a focus lock on that back. Of time, Katie Lou Samuelson, the UConn great for second all time in American Conference scoring. And the fact that she has the focus of the entire defense of the Mustangs still shooting a good percentage at 9 for 19 from the field. Mm. But it's SMU with a chance to take the lead. It's Wiggins. Comes up short. Sanderlin ties it up. This is going to go back to Temple as the freshman Kyra Wood slips inside for the board. I'm surprised Kayla White did not. Probably picks up the bye if they pick up the win. But Houston beat them twice. And if Houston beats USF on the road and we get a three-way tie at 50%, I got to figure out how that's all going to break down. That's going to go in the conference point. office. Well, you got to go in the point differential and who beat who and by how much. It'll be fun. Or they could do it like they did for my daughter's playoff in seventh grade. They had them pick it out of a hat. Oh, no. Three-pointer. Comes up short. Could have given him the lead. Now here comes Kayla White. From behind, Gordeen call for the foul. It's a huge call. And White will go to the, will not go to the line yet. Excuse me, only the third foul on Temple. I love the fact that Anaya Gordeen did not give up on the basketball play. Rushed and ran in transition to prevent Kayla White. We all know would have attacked the rim and got a bucket or initiated contact. So credit Anaya Gordeen from preventing a bucket. Wiggins nice pump fake. Yeah, absolutely. But can't get it to go. Nice pump fake by Sydney Wiggins. The shot that they wanted, just not able to knock it down. It's a three-minute scoring drought for SMU, about two and a half minutes for Temple, and the Owls can take the lead this trip. Under a minute to play. Clinton, the advantage, comes up short. Offensive rebound, Wood. She's trapped in a timeout called by the Owls. Smart call by Coach Cardoza, knowing that American Conference Championship out there in Dickey's Arena. 18 to shoot for Temple, trying to get the lead back. Trigger in by Gordine. Nowhere to go. She wants to call timeout. And for Temple, their timeouts are dwindling. That is the last one that the Owls have. Temple has Perea on the floor. Davis, of course, East, the inbound pattern. And John, what Gordine. they're doing is Jasmine Smith is not guarding the inbounder, so she is basically playing a free safety. A double Davis. Get it out to East instead. 15 to shoot. Gordeen with 10. Smith cuts her off. Gordeen gets it back. Smith does it again. Wow. You gotta be kidding me. Timeout call by SMU as Smith not once but twice pounces on the basketball. Jazz. Temple has one foul to give. They don't want to give it though because that could let SMU run out the clock for the final shot. You see the game clock, the shot clock difference is two and a half. We'll probably see a pick and roll situation with Wilkinson with either Kayla White or Jasmine Smith. Oh, they got a 1-4 flat. Gonna let Jasmine Smith just attack. Smith the playmaker. Now it's Wiggins with 10 to shoot it. They get it to Wilkinson with six. Five to shoot it. Wilkinson in trouble. And a timeout called with 2.6 on the shot clock by SMU. Good defense by the Owls. Little Wilkinson going down to the block. That's what I would try to do. Again, 2.6 to shoot it. Wiggins triggers in. SMU has one timeout left. 
Wiggins to Smith. Has to get it up. Boyce for the lead off the rim and no. And on the rebound, there is. Oh, oh there should not have been a stoppage here. And the official blew the whistle. Yeah, in inverted list. Okay, so the inbound pass comes from Smith. And Kayla White very, very quick on her catch and shoot. Smith into Wiggins for the win. It's off the rim, and we're going to overtime. Can that, you imagine? That, John, was the shot that they wanted. Executed nicely. You almost have to try not to make free throws in order to shoot that poorly from the free throw line. Foul trouble. Temple has... Two players with four fouls. Gordine has four fouls, so does Clinton. SMU does not have a player with four fouls, and the Mustangs win the tap. Now you have to recognize that Gordine is in foul trouble and attack her when you have the basketball because she is not going to want to play defense aggressively. Oh, Sanderlin, great step through. Nice up and under by Danielle Sanderlin. Fakes to the middle, then drops and rips through to the nice lob over her right shoulder on the interior. SMU had an overtime win at home against Tulane earlier this year. A chance for Mia Davis. Player of the year preseason misses over the top. Vanna Wilkinson did a good job of just walling up and forcing Mia Davis to shoot over her. Did not force the issue in foul. Just using her length to frustrate her down on the block. Temple's been to overtime once this season, a loss at USF. Here's Wilkinson trying to get going today. I'd like to see Wilkinson attack Mia Davis, put some pressure on her with three fouls. Mia Davis is not gonna want a foul. Sanderlin over the top. Here comes Jaysha Clinton playing with four fouls. Tries to throw it to the corner. Wiggins with the steal. Sydney Wiggins, nice job. And this is Sydney's, I think, third or fourth steal, fourth steal in this game. As a team, SMU has 15 steals that ties a season high. Here's a foul, and the fouls do not reset as we go to overtime. So this is the fourth team foul in the fourth and OT on Temple. Well, John, you talked about the Mustangs and how they would look at the free throw disparity at 10 for 24 if they lose this goal game. Temple with 24 turnovers. SMU 16 points off those turnovers. So they will definitely look at their turnover situation if they were to come up with an L. White to the bucket. Huge two possession advantage for SMU. Kayla White again turning the corner, attacking the rim, using her athleticism and change of speed to elevate over the defense. Clinton out to Davis, spots up for a three to keep her team in it. Jaysha Clinton passes up an open shot to give it to her moneymaker and bread and butter giver in Ma Mia Davis. Smart play with Davis only with seven threes on the season, knocking down her eighth. Wilkinson going at Gordine who fouls out. Huge play, John. Won the big three by Mia Davis, but Savannah Wilkinson attacking the rim, forcing the issue, and causing the fifth foul on Anaya Jordine, who, as Coach Cardoza told us before the game, is the MIP most important player. And you can see the frustration in her face, understanding the importance that she has for this basketball club. Yeah, she shouldn't feel bad. She's had a great game. Five-time AAC freshman of the week. When she's good, we're normally good. That's what Coach Cardoza says. And it is a tough loss at this point in the game. Well, you talk about her as a great freshman for the American, but are there any better freshmen in the country? Two triple doubles, two rebounds away from three double doubles, or three triple doubles. She's going to have a long and great career for the Temple Owls. Savannah Wilkinson, first time at the line today and nails the first top 10 in the conference, 77% this year. Two big makes. Savannah Wilkinson, the anti-storm trooper.
Jedi shooting. <laughs> I from the senior from Britain. I see what you did right there. Oh my goodness. Wiggins again! Her nice holes! She had a similar steal like that in the first half in the exact same area. Sydney Wiggins just amazing anticipation defensively in this game. A bucket here does wonders for the Mustangs. A bucket here would put so much pressure on Temple. Ah, uh, inside to Wiggins, she couldn't hold it. Coach Toyo Wilson telling Savannah Wilkinson, you want to be patient in that situation, don't force the action. Taking a look at this steal and just watch Sydney Wiggins anticipate. She elevates when Jalen Holmes brings the basketball up, high hands, gets the steal. Huge steal by Sydney Wiggins. Great play by the senior down the stretch. Season high, 16 steals for SMU as a team. I'm guessing that's a career high five steals by Sidney Wiggins. There's Clinton, only down by three. Pitches at corner, five to shoot it. A stop from Mayo, back to Clinton for the tie. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Jasha Clinton did not want to take that shot was forced to her 20th three of the year only shooting 22 percent from the three-point line nice close out by savannah wilkins but jason clinton embraced the moment knocked down the big shot for the owls what a game in dallas here's wilkinson looking to distribute instead she shoots and she's crowded and fouled by east Big time players, John, embrace the moment. Savannah Wilkins, kind of in no man's land, did not know where to pass the ball. Last resort, I'm just gonna take it myself. Good decision by her, particularly with the way that she shoots free throws. Wilkinson with seven points. It's been a quiet day for her, but just having her in the lineup just does wonders for this team. Well, well honestly, I think it was a concerted effort by Temple to take Savannah Wilkinson out offensively and force all the ancillary players to pick up the offensive slack, which they have. But great game plan by Coach Cardoza of taking Savannah Wilkinson out offensively. Under a minute to play. Nice switch by Savannah Wilkinson on Mia Davis. Temple down by two. Can they get it to Davis, their bread and butter? Instead, it's Clinton. Inside. And the leader doesn't fall for Alexa Williamson. Sanderlin again just walled up, forced Wil Alexa Williamson to shoot over her, and just as we've seen so many buckets, a little bit left, not able to get over the hump. Game clock to shot clock difference is 12. Temple does not have to foul. Wiggins back to Wilkinson to try to put the game away. Oh, she buries it. Score. Welcome to the Who's conversation. The second leading scorer, Savannah Wilkinson, yeah. and who, who is the second leading rebounder, Savannah Wilkinson. So oh. you had two great players tonight on display in American Athletic Conference conference play. Temple needs a miracle. Davis leaning in. She's fouled by Wilkinson and Davis going to the line for a couple. I mean, the door's not closed. They're just out of timeouts at this point, and they need to hit these free throws. Yeah, Temple needs to make these free throws, but it's important for the Mustangs to get the defensive rebound if she misses it. And you want to get the basketball to your free throw shooters because Temple's going to have to foul. And that has to be Savannah Wilkinson, the only player out there for SMU that's positive from the free throw line. So Davis makes both free throws. Timeout SMU. It cuts it down to a two-point game. And Davis with 28. Average double figures for a team. So that she gets no help. She has the focal point of the opposition every single night. And she still does it. SMU passing in. It's got to be a good one. They get it to Wilkinson. A foul has to come eventually. Davis finally does foul. She didn't want to, though, because she has fouled out. 8.4 left. And that's what... As a team, you got to understand, like, we got to keep Mia Davis in the, in the game. Someone else needs to go over there and foul. Recognition of your greatness that's on your team. You got to protect your superstar. 
Davis, an historic night. Let's honor that. She moves into second all-time in scoring and rebounding in conference history. She's already one of the greatest players in Temple Owl history, but takes a seat after fouling out. She won't play again until Wednesday. Now, the door's not closed for Temple, especially with the way that SMU has struggled to shoot the free throw tonight. Yeah, we're back to Mia Davis. She can go to sleep tonight knowing that she gave her all and did not leave anything to chance and did not leave any shots. No timeouts left for Temple. So if it's a miss, they've got to advance it and hit the tying three. But Wilkinson may have slammed the door. Two possession game for the Mustangs. And if I'm Temple, you got to get the quickest shot possible. He's coming up the floor. Three seconds. Hoist, no good, that ends it, and SMU picks up an incredibly hard-fought overtime victory to take